Another eBay special, it's a Buddha lamp. Let me show you what this looks like when it's running and then I'll let you hear what it sounds like. I've featured these before, very interesting. Uh, I shall turn it on and I shall take the exposure off. Uh, I shall zoom down onto round about there and we'll see if it just swamps out. Oh, that's not bad, not bad. Uh, it's basically sweeping through random colours. Um, when that switch is turned on, that's all it does. It doesn't play any music, it just creates this nice visual effect. That's quite attractive. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back. The light is back. So let's zoom out, and I'll let you hear this thing now, because this is when it gets a bit weird. I don't think these music uh, songs are actually covered by sort of copyright, but who knows? Let's try it. See if uh, it gets blacklisted. So you turn it up, and it plays, it plays Buddha chanting mantras. You click a button, and another, and you can click through. I shall turn this down because it gets a bit annoying after a while. You can click through, and it basically has 39 different tunes. Some of them are just literally old guys going ba sha ba sha just over and over and it's supposed to put you into a meditative mood i did not find it put me into a meditative mood but let's open this let's take it to bits i'm just going to tame that down a bit so i'll pop the batteries out oh it's actually uh maybe should have spotted this before oh it's got a list of the songs in the back but they're not in english so that doesn't really help much I shall pop the batteries out. I shall use this to get the batteries out. And we'll take a look at the circuitry. These things are sometimes called Buddha machines or Buddha boxes. And I think they're just based on uh, an MP3 player module inside, but not really sure. Uh, there's three screws. One here. One here. And one here. Oh, I forgot to show you something. It doesn't really matter. I will show you. There's the base off. There's the circuit board that does most of the work. If you unclip this bit here and look down into the end, I shall zoom in for this. You can see the LED module, which basically consists of six LEDs, two red, two green, two blue, and a little sort of blob microcontroller thing to control them. That's all that's in there. So under here we have this little circuit board, let's pop that circuit board out. And we've got a tiny little speaker in here that says XY. 0.5 watt? Very flat. It's venting out these holes uh, here. I shall zoom out because I zoomed in and forgot I'd zoomed in. The PCB is different to what it was last time. Last time the PCB, um, it uh, had an actual active chip in it. Is this a memory chip? Where is a, where is a magnifying glass? There is a magnifying glass. I could just take a picture of this and then we could explore it, but there's really not an awful lot on it. But I will do nonetheless. FM25Q16A. I think that's a memory chip, a serial memory chip. Okay, one moment please, I'm just going to take a picture of this and then we shall explore it together. Right, let's explore. I'm not going to attempt to draw the circuit diagram down for this because ultimately the circuit diagram is going to be blob chip and memory chip for it. That's all there is to it. But it divides into two distinct sections of circuitry. There's the switched feed up to the, uh, the colour changing LEDs and then there's the audio circuitry. The battery supply comes on here, negative here, positive here. It goes onto a connection on a jack so that if you plug a jack connection to this an external source, theoretically, it should disconnect that. I didn't check that. I'm not sure I've got a jack that size handy. The negative uh, goes up here and it goes to one side of the switch that's built into the volume control. It also goes to one of the pins on the slide switch for the LEDs. The positive comes through this diode for polarity protection in case you put the batteries in the wrong way around or use the wrong type of power supply. And it uh, goes up to the LED positive 
And the LED negative is simply switched between the actual sliding switch pins. You can see the tang of the sliding switch here. And it just switches the one pin down to negative. This, uh, there's no extra pad for that. All they did was put the wire for the LEDs directly onto the switch pad. The negative uh, is switched to the chip via the built-in switch and the volume control. This little bit of red plastic simply pushes that up to open it. You can see the brake there. But when you turn the volume round, it clicks down and uh, that closes the circuit. And the light blue here is then feeding over to the uh, chip and the audio circuitry in the memory. It's basically the whole negative for this area. The positive is just fed directly to the chip all the time. Uh, we've got a button here that connects, go to the positive rail. I should mention as well, lots of decoupling capacitors, if you like calling them decoupling capacitors, that's a controversial area. I've missed it a little bit here, I shall do it. Including this little decoupling capacitor here. But it's worth mentioning that this chip has a 3.3 volt voltage reference in it, so it actually puts out its own 3.3 volt rail for its own internal uh, circuitry and for the memory chip. So that's why this button is pulling uh, up to that positive rail and it will have an internal weak pull down. This chip here is the memory chip that stores all the music and it's an FM25Q168 16 megabit uh, memory chip and uh, that equates to 2 megabytes of music data. Now, in MP3 terms, if it was like proper quality, that would be just two minutes. But in this case, the quality is not really great. It can be a bit uh, harsh, so they've obviously compressed that to allow them to introduce other musical items into it. And some of the files are very, very short. Uh, literally, the files are like three seconds long before it loops to the chants, uh, or they could be, for very short music bits, it's a five-second loop of someone just basically smashing, I was going to say a smashing a cowbell, more cowbell, but uh, it's like little chimes the sort of Buddha chanters have, uh, and they're just basically smashing that repeatedly while they're chanting. It doesn't sound very relaxing. And this basically puts out the amplified audio, and it does it to the variable, the potentiometer, and uh, the speaker is simply connected between one of those outputs and via the potentiometer to the middle wiper arm that as you rotate it round, it gets louder. So uh, I'm guessing that means that rotates round that way from the quiet side to the loud side. And the volume is very abrupt. Let me bring this back in. So virtually nothing. Slightly louder. And then... Suddenly very loud at the end. It's not exactly what you call a nice, smooth transition. So last time I took a look at one of these, uh, I was chastised for not removing the chip and taking a memory dump from it. I did with this one. I removed the chip, took a dump of the memory, uh, not sure what format it's in. Uh, then I actually experimentally, I tried loading an MP3 file onto the chip. I didn't have any success there, largely because I completely forgot that uh, the, I think there's more information on it, but I'll let the experts judge that because the file can be downloaded from a link down below in the description. But uh, the, I was going to put an MP3 file into it to try that out, but I simply just uh, at the time I didn't have a small enough mp3 file. The only one I had was about three or four minutes long and this would not hold that. It just overwrote the uh, memory so it was too much. Uh, so I ended up having to uh, delete and uh, and uh, just reprogram the original Buddha music back into that from that file. So the file, file, the file has been confirmed as being valid because uh, this chip has been deleted and then it's been reprogrammed the original data that was in it. Uh, anything else? to say about this. There's nothing to say about this. It's just a mass-produced little chanting Buddha box. So if you go into the description down below, you will find that music uh, file. I don't know what format it's in. I don't know what other information. I don't know if they've got security on it to try and stop people copying the music from the chips and putting it in other products. Um, but uh, I'll let the experts do that because I'm sure that some of you have all the tools required to just basically load that file and then scan it looking for known file formats within that. But there we go. That is another of these 
multitude of Buddha boxes that is available on eBay for making ambient chanting noises.